So in this video, I'm going to help you review uh, for test 2 in your Math 100 class. On your test review, I'm going to do each of the different problem types that appear. First type of problem is question 1, where we're given this expression and we're asked to identify a bunch of information about this expression. First question, how many terms are in the expression? Well, remember that, that terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So all I have to do is count them up. One, two, three, four terms. Okay. Next question is to list the variable terms. Notice I'm not asked to identify how many variable terms, but in fact to list them. So I want to list them. A variable term is anything that has a variable in it. So I have one, two, three variable terms, but I need to list these. So my first variable term, 4x squared y. My next variable term, negative 6y. Be sure to include the sign as you list it. The last variable term is negative x. Next question, list all constant terms. Well, constant terms are the ones that don't have any variables in them at all. I have one constant term. So to list that, I just write that. And notice again, I include the negative sign on there. List all the coefficients. Well, the coefficients are the numbers that appear in the terms. So my first coefficient is 4. My next coefficient is negative 6. Even though it doesn't appear, there is it understood that there's a 1 here. So the coefficient on this term is negative 1. The last term, negative 14. Coefficient is negative 14. Next problem we'll take a look at is number 7. Next problem we'll take a look at is problem number 7. Here we're asked to simplify. Okay, So following the order of operations, I would attempt to simplify what's inside the parentheses. However, you'll notice that these are not like terms, so I cannot subtract 1 from n. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll go to the multiplication, and I want to distribute the negative 3. So I'm going to take the negative 3 times both of the terms in the parentheses, so I'll write down the 5, because I'm not doing anything with 5 yet. Negative 3 times a positive n will give me negative 3n. And a negative 3 times a negative 1 will give me a positive or a plus 3. Now, after I've done the multiplication, I want to see if I can combine like terms. I have some like terms here, the 5 and the 3. So I can write this as 8 minus 3n. I also could switch the order of these and write negative 3n plus 8 either of these answers would work. Next problem we'll take a look at is problem number 12. And here I'm asked to use the distributive property. So I'm just going to go through and distribute the 3x. A positive 3x times a negative 2x will give me a negative 6. And when I multiply the x's together, it will give me an x squared. 3x times a positive 4 will give me a positive 12x. The next problem we'll take a look at is problem number 24. And in problem number 24, we're asked to multiply. Okay. In fact, we're multiplying binomials. Well, the problem I've been given is x plus 1 to the second power. What that indicates to me is that I need to take the base x plus 1 and multiply it by itself. So to multiply these two binomials, I just need to distribute first the x, which is going to give me x times x will give me x squared. x times 1 will give me a positive or plus 1x. Now I'm halfway done. I need to distribute the 1. So I'll take 1 times x, which will give me a positive or plus 1x. And then a 1 times 1 will give me a positive 1. I have some like terms in the center there that I can combine. So I'll have x squared plus 2x plus 1. Next problem we'll take a look at is problem number 31. In 31, we're asked to factor out the greatest common factor. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my structure. Remember, this is the opposite of the distributive property. 
So I'm going to end up with my greatest common factor out front and the factors that are left over on the inside. Okay. So first take a look at numbers 8 and 14. The greatest common factor of 8 and 14 is 2. Now let's take a look at the variables. I have a b squared and a b. Well I have two b's being multiplied here and I have one there. So they have in common one b. So the greatest common factor for my variable parts is b. Now I'm going to divide this out and that will tell me what's going to be left inside of the parentheses. So if I divide a 2b out of the first term, 8b squared, we'll start with the numbers again. 8 divided by 2, 4. b squared, if I divide one of those b's out, there'll be one left. Okay? Going to the next term. 14 and 2, if I divide a 2 out of 14, I'll have a 7. And if I divide b by b, I get 1. So there aren't any b's left. So. There's my factoring, when I factor the greatest common factor out of these two terms. Next problem we're going to take a look at is problem number 39. In problem number 39, we're asked to factor the trinomial. Okay, We want to kind of follow a three-step process when we factor trinomials. First step is to get the structure. So my structure is always two sets of parentheses. And in this case, since I'm factoring with a y, I'm going to write y and y. So there's my structure is now set up. Second step is to do the signs. Okay? What I'm going to have in these two spots is I want two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 20. Well, things that multiply to give me a negative 20, one of them will have to be positive, one of them will have to be negative. Okay? So what I get, once I got my signs, now the final thing is I want to go to the factors. And so I'm going to list possibilities of factors of 20. Well, I have 20 and 1, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Okay? So I want the combination of these factors that is going to give me a negative 8. Well, notice since I have one positive and one negative, when I add these together, I'm going to get some cancellation. So I'm actually looking for the two set type or two factors here that will give me a difference of 8. The two factors that have a difference of 8 are 2 and 10. Okay, now I just need to make sure I get them in the right spot. Notice I want to end up with a negative 8 when I add these. If I put the factors a positive 2 here and a negative 10 there, if I add a positive 2 and a negative 10, that will give me a negative 8. So I'm going to put the 2 there and the 10 there, and notice when I add them together, that will give me a negative 8 for my middle term. So those are the different problem types that appear on your test 2 review and these are the different problem types that will appear on your test. Hopefully this video will